Because tonight will be the night that I will fall for you over again. Don't make me change my mind. Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Devin coming back at you with another video today in Pub Stomp MTG. And no mom, this is not a phase because winter is absolutely exuding angst. I mean, just look at the card and tell me this is not just an angsty teenager. Besides that point, let's read what this card does because it is pretty unique in what it's doing and could be a little salt inducing. So for one red, black, and a green, legendary creature, human warlock with war two and a three, four body. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player draws two cards and he does have delirium as long as there's four more card types among cards in your graveyard each opponent's maximum hand size is equal to seven minus the number of those card types so winner looks like he's a pretty good friend but all at the same time just backstabbing you with that last ability almost like a ginger taxis in the way where your opponents won't necessarily have a maximum hand size anymore mainly because you have delirium and you have seven card types in your graveyard so that your opponent just essentially can't keep their hand so this seems like a very fun group hug and also a group slug deck in a way where because it's kind of matching both both of those elements so that's what i will be discussing today i will be discussing some cards that you should add into your deck and let's get started So let's first focus on Delirium. There's a lot of ways we can mill ourselves and discard cards to meet that cost. You could run some looting effects like Faithless Looting and Cathartic Reunion. These are great because they're essentially card selection. You could draw two cards then discard two cards. You could select the which cards you want to put in the graveyard so that you can meet the Delirium cost. Another great card selection card is Underrealm Lich. This is great because if you would draw a card and said look at the top three cards of your library then put one of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. So this is just a way where we could select which card we want in our hand and then the rest in the graveyard, specifically ones with different card types. You can take it a step further and search for specific cards in your library to put in the graveyard just in case if you want to meet that delirium cost. So you could easily take advantage of some Entomb effects like Entomb, Vile Entombor, and Unmarked Grave. And another fun card I did want to highlight is Greater Good. Sacrifice a creature, draw cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power, then discard three cards. This will come up later on, but this is going to be a very important card, especially when we have big creatures on the battlefield. We could draw a bunch of cards and then discard three three cards that we do need to meet that delirium cost. So I'd highly recommend this one for future use that I'll talk about later. In this deck, you'll want to have a lot of ways to meet that delirium cost. You want to have planeswalkers, creatures, sorceries, instants, artifacts, enchantments, lands, and battles. So that way you have to make your opponents discard a bunch of cards. There are some planeswalkers that do synergize with the graveyard. Liliana of the Veil is one that I could think of. It acts as removal and each player has to discard a card, including yourself. You could just discard one of the cards that you need to fit that delirium cost. Renin 7 is a another excellent choice because you reveal the top four cards of your library put all land cards reveal this way into your hand and the rest into your graveyard that plus one is going to be utilized heavily in this deck gris is another excellent choice with that plus one ability milling ourselves so that we could put more card types into our graveyard and with liliana death's majesty it has that ability with that plus one create a two two black zombie creature token and mill two cards we could constantly use that plus one ability and later on if we want to reanimate a specific creature from our graveyard we can with that minus three ability and there's a ton of other planeswalkers that you can utilize those are some some ones I did want to highlight. I'm not going to highlight every single card type. I did make a deck list down below in the description if you did want to check it out and see what kind of card types I picked so that way you could kind of utilize it to the fullest situation with that Delirium ability. But now let's focus on cards that synergize with the graveyard, specifically with Delirium. Of course that does mean we're using Tarmogoyfs in this deck because they focus on specific card types to buff themselves up and that's why Greater Good is going to be an excellent choice in this deck because we could sacrifice those Tarmogoyfs so that we could draw a bunch of cards and discard some cards. So just to mention a couple of them, Barrowgoyf is going to be excellent because it does have Death Touch and Lifelink. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may mill that many cards. If you do, you may put a creature card from among them into your hand. Nethergoyf is another excellent choice because you could escape it for two and a black, so you could constantly recur it. You will have to sacrifice specific card types in order to do so, but I feel like that's a sacrifice I'm willing to pay. Polygoyf is another excellent choice because you could swing with it, and it does have Myriad, so when you're swinging it at one opponent, you're going to be making two extra token copies of it, swinging 
swinging at the other opponents. And Pyrogoyf is going to be a great include because it's basically like a Terror of the Peaks for Lurgoyfs. Because when it or another Lurgoyf enters the battlefield, that creature deals damage equal to its power to any target. So depending on how much card types are in your graveyard, the more you could blast at any target. But let's move away from some Goyfs and talk about some other creatures that are going to be pretty powerful in the deck with the graveyard synergy. The first card I think about is Sir Conrad the Grim. This is absolutely a menace and honestly wrecks a lot of games whenever another creature dies or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield or a creature card leaves your graveyard. Sir Conrad the Grim deals one damage to each opponent and you can pay one in a black. Each player mills a card which that does include ourselves so we want to mill ourselves so that way we could fill up that delirium ability with winter. So this is great because a lot of people are probably going to be discarding their cards depending on how much cards we do have in our graveyard with the delirium ability. We could just punish them for discarding them. I do also like some cards like Anger and Brawn, those incarnations that have the effect in the graveyard as long as you control a mountain, creatures you control have haste, and with Brawn it has that ability as long as you control a forest, creatures you control have trample. So that's going to be pretty good because it could give our big giant beefy creatures, which are all Tarmogoyfs, and some other creatures haste and trample depending on which ones are in the graveyard and if we have those stipulations of lands. But now let's switch topics and focus on punishing our opponents for card draw because each opponent, including ourselves, are going to be drawing two cards at our upkeep. One of the newer cards on the list would be Razorkin Needlehead. For two red mana, it's a creature human assassin. It has the ability of first strike during your turn, and whenever an opponent draws a card, Razorkin Needlehead deals one damage to them. So in a way, this reminds me of Freddy Krueger because it has stripes on his chest, and he does have claws, so obviously there are some similarities. Besides that point, this is a great option for us because at the beginning of our upkeep, each opponent will lose two life when we deal two damage to them. Plus, this is very low to the ground just for two mana. Another great option that will help fill our delirium would be Obnixilus, the Hate Twisted, for three and two black with a five loyalty planeswalker. Whenever an opponent draws a card, Obnixilus, the Hate Twisted, deals one damage to that player. And you could use his minus two loyalty ability to destroy target creature, its controller draws two cards. So what's great about this card is the fact that we could use this offensively and defensively. If we have a creature card that we have on the battlefield, we could destroy that creature and draw two cards. And of course, at the beginning of our upkeep, same thing with the Razorkin, our opponents will take two damage when they draw two cards. A more degenerate option compared to the other two would be Orcish Bowmaster. This is up there in price, so if you don't want to spend the money for it, you don't need to because you could just proxy it if you wanted to. It has the ability when it enters the battlefield and whenever an opponent draws a card except the first one they draw in each of their draw steps. Orcish Bowmaster deals one damage to any target, then a mass Orcs one. So this one is basically a way stronger version of the other Razorkin. The Razorkin is basically just a powered down version of Orcish Bowmasters, if I'm being honest. But this one is absolutely cracked in this deck because our opponents are going to be drawing two cards each. We could spread six damage however we choose and we have mass six at the beginning of your upkeep. That's absolute value. But let's talk about another format warper and that's Shieldred the Apocalypse. This has the ability whenever you draw a card you gain two life and whenever an opponent draws a card they lose two life. So this one is a no-brainer in the deck. Obviously another expensive card. I know a lot of these are pretty expensive but again you can proxy them. But this essentially will read for you at the beginning of your upkeep when you have your commander out. Each opponent will lose four life at the beginning of your upkeep and you'll gain six life because remember you're drawing an extra card on top of those two other cards at your upkeep. And because people are drawing cards naturally in the game at the beginning of their upkeep, they're slowly just going to get drained little by little with two life per draw. So this is just absolutely disgusting in the deck. Another card that absolutely would wreck your opponents would be Psychosis Crawler. For five mana, its power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your hand. Whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses one life. So essentially what this does read at the beginning of your upkeep, if you do have your commander out of the battlefield, you'll draw three cards and each opponent will lose three life. And plus with a lot of the looting effects that you would run in this deck, it's a no-brainer that Psychosis Crawler will drain your opponents for a lot. So with all that said, that's going to do it for me guys. Thank you guys so much for coming by and watching this video on Winter. This one is a pretty interesting commander. Obviously it's very mean with that last Delirium ability. Let me know down below in the comments how mean is it and do you plan on building Winter yourself? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. Also make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. That's definitely one of the best ways in supporting the channel. And with that out of the way, thank you for stomping by.